Water pollution. Agriculture and pollution. Recall that when planning your farm, you do so in zones to prevent chemicals, smells, noise, and more from invading your home. The introduction of substances that are harmful to the environment is called pollution. There are four types of pollution. All have a relationship with agriculture, which will be reviewed through this section. Water, air, soil, and noise. Agriculture is affected by pollution, but also causes pollution. It's important to understand how pollution interacts with different environmental and climatic factors in order to best protect your farm and enable future agricultural growth. What is water pollution? Water pollution occurs when any artificial products are in water. These artificial products, which in this context are known as pollutants or contaminants, include organics and inorganic chemicals, pathogens, infectious microorganisms, and macroscopic objects such as trash, shipwrecks, plastics, and other objects. Global water pollution. Water pollution occurs in freshwater sources throughout the world. While developing countries struggle with finding the means of controlling acute water pollution, more developed countries also struggle with water pollution. In the United States, 44% of streams, 64% of lakes, and 30% of bays were classified as polluted. Generally, the vast oceans are not as polluted as freshwater sources. There may be surface pollution, but because they are so deep and vast, most of the ocean is not polluted. Rising acidity in the ocean. Although pollution in the ocean is not as acute as it is in freshwater sources, there is concern for how industrialization has affected the ocean's pH. As industrialization has increased in the past 200 years, more of the greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide, has been released into the atmosphere. The, the ocean absorbs around 30% of this carbon dioxide. Dissolved carbon dioxide, CO2, forms carbonic acid which releases hydrogen ions into the water, lowering pH and increasing the acidity. Using your knowledge of the factors of climate, why might this phenomenon impact agriculture? Discuss. Acidification affects many types of marine life. Shelled mollusks are not able to deposit calcium into their shells because carbonate ions interfere. In addition, a lower pH will make the shells thinner. Acidity in the ocean can also cause and be caused by agriculture. If the marine life and other nutrients change due to pollution, the ecosystem shifts. For example, acidic ocean water raises the temperature of the ocean, affecting the climate and your farm. Some farmers use ocean water to improve their soil quality and fertility. A change in pH level would prevent use of this approach. Excess chemical fertilizer, or fertilizer runoff, can move from your farm into fresh or salt bodies of water. Runoff introduces nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphates into the ocean. This increases the acidity and nutrient contents in the ocean. Increased acidity in the ocean is often a result of pollutants released in the air. These pollutants can also cause acid rain, which harms plants and soil, as well as impacting human health. Algae blooms. Nitrogen and phosphates are required for life. Nitrogen is required for building amino acids and proteins, and phosphates are required for building nucleic acid, DNA, and RNA, as well as ATP. While it is important that aquatic organisms get the nitrogen and phosphate nutrients they need, too many of these nutrients, especially in a smaller body of water, cause harm to the ecosystem. Algae will consume the extra nutrients and overpopulate the lake. When an algae bloom forms over a lake, oxygen and other nutrients cannot get to the other organisms underneath the surface. This results in dead zones that kill fish and other organisms that do not get enough oxygen. If the lake or its basin is your source of irrigation, this development can cause an imbalance in crop cultivation or even drought-like conditions. Trutants. Trash pollutants include all manufactured products that end up in water. Plastic is especially harmful to ecosystems because it does not decompose quickly. Most trash in water comes from littering, storms, and poor waste management. Common trash items include plastic items such as bottles, ring can holders, bags, caps, as well as smaller microplastics. 
Heavy metal pollutants. Mercury is naturally released into water from soil, rocks, and volcanic activity. However, mercury levels in the upper layers of the ocean and the soil have increased during the past 200 years. Artificial sources of mercury include coal burning, mining, and waste from consumer products. In the past, mercury has been used in fungicide and, or pesticide. Whether mercury is released in mining or agriculture, heavy metals do not dissipate quickly. Their effects continue to this day. Bioaccumulation of mercury. Mercury often accumulates in organisms faster than it is excreted, known as bioaccumulation. When humans consume a fish that has mercury in its tissues, the mercury enters the body and causes health issues. Excess mercury in the body can cause damage to the nervous system and interfere with normal brain development. Biomagnification of mercury. Mercury that enters the ocean from coal plants and mines is often in the form of methyl mercury. Although the amounts of mercury in the ocean are small, it becomes more concentrated as it moves through the food chain. Pollutants such as mercury can have the same effect in agriculture. This is why soil testing and mapping is an important step in planning your farm. While agrochemicals can cause problems and min mineral imbalances, as in the diagram below, some plants process toxins such as mercury, preventing it from harming other life forms. Pathogens. When freshwater sources are polluted with inadequately treated sewage, water carrying human wastes and other pollutants, pathogens are more abundant. Some of these pathogens include various types of bacteria, including Salmonella typhi and Escherichia coli, and other types of bacteria that cause typhoid fever, cholera, and gastroenteritis. Other types of pathogens from sewage include parasitic worms. One type of these worms is the schistosoma type. They have a life cycle that involves infecting a human host and an intermediate snail host. The worm larva hatches from eggs in human feces in water, penetrates into a snail, matures into another stage, then penetrates a human walking in the polluted stream. While in the human intestine, the worm produces eggs that are excreted in the feces, end up in a polluted stream, and the life cycle repeats. Schistosoma alone accounts for approximately 1% loss of the gross national product of Burkina Faso, much of it agricultural. This is due to human and water infection as well as the lack of healthy individuals to farm. Substance farmers are most likely to be impacted by the disease. A 2021 study, linked below, found that crop yields would increase 7-32% to if schistosoma were eradicated. Schistosoma Life Cycle Chemical Pollution Chemical pollutants include naturally occurring chemicals such as iron, calcium, and sodium. However, when these chemicals are released into freshwater sources through human activity, they can be harmful to the ecosystem. As previously mentioned, nitrogen-containing compounds and phosphates are common types of chemical pollutants. In addition, insecticides and herbicides used for agriculture and personal gardening can also end up as water pollutants. Point sources of pollution. Point sources of pollution release contaminants into water through a single source, such as from a factory, a sewage treatment plant, or a storm drain. Farms are not usually a point source, but the factories that produce agrochemicals can be. In addition to the waste dumped into water from factories, water that runs over the street collects pollutants on the street, including chemicals from automobile exhausts and oils. This water is collected into storm drains that are often directed to larger bodies of water. Non-point sources of pollution Non-point sources of pollution cannot be attributed to a single source. Rather, this kind of pollution comes from contaminants over a large area. A common example of non-point pollution is the leaching out of nitrogen-containing compounds from fertilized farming fields. Another example is the accumulation of phosphates, also found in fertilizers, but also from dishwasher and laundry detergents as well as other cleaning products. Phosphates collect from residential areas where people use these cleaning products and end up in streams and lakes.